welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dear Alice. Today, we're talking about cabinets. So many cabinet questions. You guys, and it's one of the most expensive line items in a, in a home. Yeah. You know, when you're building a house, when you're remodeling it, like it's just expensive and people don't know necessarily where to start or how to decipher which construction is best. And so we get questions about this all the time. Yeah. We've gone to some experts and hopefully can answer some of your questions today, mm -hmm. not only on style, but on actual like the functionality and... Yeah what to tell your cabinet maker. I also right? feel like more than ever, people want way more cabinets in their home than oh what their gosh. parents did. And so I think it would be a pro tip to say, get a hold of your house plans, populate it with any areas you think you want cabinetry. Mm -hmm. Make sure and do that before you hand it over to your cabinet maker. Get a bid on what you actually want because yeah nothing's more frustrating in a bill to be like, Oh, I forgot to tell you, I want a wall of built-ins here. And then, um, surprise your cabinet, cost you. <laughs> your cabinet cost doesn't fit into your cabinet bit yeah. anymore. And nobody's the bad guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And you're you just, have to pay for just it. Mad at yeah. your elder because you want a house full of cabinets where in the old days they would just put them in kitchens and bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? I know. No lockers in the locker room. Oh no, gosh, where do you put your backpack? Bedroom. <laughs> no, yeah, like we just use so many cabinets today. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like the consumer is so smart and savvy and they want more than ever before out of their home. Mm -hmm. And that cabinetry bid is a hefty number. Yeah. And we start there when we design. We start and we design cabinetry. All the rooms with cabinetry first, Yep. you know? What so. do you guys think the percentage of, I mean, I kind of have it in my mind, but that's probably a different scale. Like percentage of the home cost is cabinetry. I think it's funny that you think we think in percentages, Corey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so no, I, I said know, I have, I have answer? mine in mind. Well, I know, I know you have a number inside your head, but I feel like Sue and I probably don't think in percentages. So what's your number? I, th and I think it's like 10 to on the low end, 10%, high end, like 20%. Of the, of the home price of the home uh, cost of the so home. So it's yeah. like furniture because yeah. furniture yeah. should cost 20. between 15 and 20% of the yeah. cost mm -hmm. of your home. So just like seriously do the math for one minute on that, because I'm sure a lot of you are living with real good deal on furniture in your houses and probably don't have enough furniture for the most part. Mm -hmm. Oh, some of you might not even have end tables next to your sofas or lamps. You for sure don't have lamps and there's a good chance a lot of you don't have art or rugs. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. And that's why we're here. We're going to help you figure all that out. For right? sure. So for sure. Yes. But for some reason on the build, I do think people are really good at putting a lot of cabinets in and a lot of millwork, which is your mm -hmm. finished work on the walls, which is not cabinetry nope. um, and is not made by your cabinet maker. It's made from a finished worker. So we're kind of going to get into this whole thing of like, mm -hmm. some people believe that the finished worker should do the closets, mm -hmm. which is put a rod in, put a shelf in, put cubbies in. Yeah. But a lot of you want really sophisticated closets, which means the cabinet maker is going to make. Cabinet maker, a minimum a, a cabinet system. It's going to make you a kitchen's system. worth of cabinets yeah. in your um, closet. So don't be surprised when your cabinet bid looks like, a whole bunch of kitchens are in your house. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. So, okay, let's break it down. Yeah. Also, don't you feel like the pantries today are oh my gosh, bigger than your own kitchen? <laughs> yeah. Pantry. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And I'm saying we'll talk to like when we're talking to experts, just about the percentage of just like right now in this current climate, what that looks like. Cause it was big before it's a little bit bigger. We're going to talk about that. Definitely. But first we have a little note from one of our sponsors, Hunter Douglas. I love Hunter Douglas. I've said it on here before. It's just a game changer, especially, I mean, children or no children. It's just like for you to have a lovely sleep. The blackout shades are my very, very favorite. Um, so today you should go visit hunterdouglas.com slash dear Alice for your free style, get smarter design guide with fresh takes, creative ideas, and smart solutions for dressing your windows and really fitting the lifestyle that you want. That's hunterdouglas.com slash dear Alice for your free design guide. Awesome. Thanks, Sue. Girl, you got it. I also love Hunter Douglas and have a house full of it. I can't wait like to talk no. more about that. But first, let's talk about cabinets. 
Um, oh, let's do it. Yes. Okay. Lots to unpack here. Lots to unpack. <laughs> I think we have four pages worth. Oh my Thank gosh. you so much for sending in questions, guys. We put this out to our social media. We often do this and we say, hey, we're doing a podcast on cabinets. What are your questions? Mm-hmm. And you guys loaded us up for bear. We have so many here. Um, no. Okay. So the first one is a question from Jennifer Mundy. Um, she's up in Canada and she's building a 1960s colonial home. So this is her question. Um, Dear Alice, email question, can you help choosing cabinet door profiles? At the cabinet maker today, I realized how many choices there are and it's so hard to know what to pick. I love everything. Um, I would love to hear all your thoughts, especially in thinking through the extra details. Like if you would add a reading detail, uh, what door profile looks best with that and what kind of countertop edge. Thanks so much. P.S. Yeah. Personally, I'm trying to find something that walks the line between traditional and casual. Our house is a 1960s colonial home in Canada. So far, cabinet profiles have been the most challenging for me in the entire build, perhaps because it's such a huge investment and it it can be really paralyzing, right? Like, sure. Like, shoot, I don't know. I thought I always wanted a white kitchen, but maybe I don't. And you're paralyzed because that number on your cabinet bid is just monster sized. Yeah. And you're like, I can't screw up. I got to love this my whole life. So So true. Let's help Jennifer Mundy out. It's also the thing that I feel like you interact with in your home the most, maybe besides the furniture, but the thing that's like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like built into your house. Like that's your, your opening doors and drawers and cooking, um, you know, yeah. preparing on like a countertops and stuff. So it's the yeah. heart of the home. It's huge. I feel like if you're walking into a home t- to buy one, if it's, you know, going to be a remodel or something, mm-hmm. I feel like you're always looking for the kitchen. And as soon as you find the kitchen, which is like the nucleus of the home, it's like the heart of the home. You're yep. like, okay, okay. I know it. Okay. Let me figure this out now. And I can figure can out the this. flow of yeah. the house and what's yeah. The, yeah. What's the pulse of this place? Yeah. So it's like oftentimes the kitchen that will sell it for a lady or, um, I don't know. Or make her walk away. Yes. You know, and oftentimes then you're like, Ooh, what'd they choose for appliances? Cause everybody's so savvy today and they're super smart and, mm-hmm. um, appliances are also super fun. They take the better part of a year to get right now. So be sure and put in that order before yep. you start um, building your cabinets. So, I mean, so do cabinets. Cabinet makers are out a long time. So it used to be in a build process, you'd frame the house and the cabinet makers would come in and like kind of, you know, pull all, the, all their dimensions. I think it's personally wise just to kind of build them off plans right now. No one has so, that luxury timeline. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you anymore. just, you, you can't do it like, or, or your, your construction project will be sitting waiting for cabinetry. Yeah. Yeah. after drywall. So yeah, definitely, which means everyone else is sitting, waiting to flooring. So, but this is off. a case. She, this is a remodel. Yeah. So her house Jennifer. has been standing since the 1960s. So she's just going to wait a real long time for this new kitchen, yep. you know, cause Ooh. she's already living in the house. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's going to take a minute, especially to get those new appliances in. I know. And I think too, Jennifer, it sounds like you already kind of know some of these details that you want, which means that you've done your research, which I would say for any of you guys out there, before you start on this endeavor, gather your images, gather what you love. And that's going to be the best information you can take to your cabinet maker as they help you. In your case, Jennifer, where you're wanting to try and figure out your door style for this 1960s colonial and figure out where to add reading. We love reading. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, We love reading is the one that kind of it, it actually concaves out mm-hmm. instead of concaves in it's not carved in so we use it a lot we i love the use of it on like smaller like your appliance doors or the small row of drawers at the top of a bank i think that's a beautiful way to use it i also think it's really pretty to use it on a freeze like you'll usually have a crown that where your cabinetry meets the ceiling mm-hmm. and if you have the height to do like a little freeze to you know it's too small to do an actual cabinet door but you could do like some filler like a readed breeze up there is beautiful. I think that's a really cute idea. I wouldn't do it too many places like everywhere because then you may tire of it. So um, keep it minimal uh, door style with that. Mm-hmm. I would honestly, I would do, I love the door style where it actually has just like a little beater round. Yeah. The pencil mold. You have this just in your kitchen. And I it's think like a flat yeah. front, but then along the edge, it doesn't just go flat into the rails. It um, has a little tiny pencil 
rail, mm-hmm. which is the just door. like a, just like a a, a bull nosed. Yeah, it's uh, just yeah, a little radius yeah. trim. Yeah, yeah, it's a, but like a rounded it. top trim mm-hmm. that sits on top of the panel next to the styles just and like, rails. Do you think like a quarter inch? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a little tiny detail that's pronounced that looks like one read yeah. is surrounding your door frame to kind of connect it to the reading. Mm-hmm. Um, we have done one too where it's like we love to do something where we do like a really enlarged panel for all the drawers mm-hmm. and then slice that right mm-hmm. so it looks like one larger detail but then it's been cut into four yeah and that's all your drawers and so it's like less frames less lines less style yeah the look of less styles and, and rails. it's enlarged too which mm-hmm. is like whoa look at that cabinet you know yeah it looks like one but it's really four <laughs> or it looks like a large door but really it's four drawers uh-huh. and so we kind of like to bend our minds over things like that which is really fun on the lowers and we like knobs. We want yeah. all the lowers to be knobs these days. Yeah. Usually Unless like you're a little contemporary peacoat, than you know? like a, a ledge pole. Yeah. It's like super cool, but I'm not really interested in seeing anybody's poles. Not really? Not. I mean, you see them on appliances. We yes. do them there, obviously. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, we do love a knob and we love seeing like the rows of them. Yeah. Like little comms on them. Looks like peacoats mm-hmm. happening. And it's so, so darling. So cute. Because everything in the kitchen is a square or a rectangle. And so mm-hmm. to get a little relief with a round knob feels really good mm-hmm. in my brain and, and to my eyeballs. Yeah, I love that. And I also feel like that one reeded detail along the edge, that pencil mold that we're talking about, is also a soft shape. Mm-hmm. And so it also feels really good against all the rigid lines of a kitchen. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty. And oddly enough, guys, the bullnose countertop is so back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Clap yourself on the back, mom. You've got it, girl. <laughs> Don't change it. Just ride it. So do you ride think like, all the way home. like a 3CM that's bullnosed or do they like miter it and then bullnose the miter? Both. They, both. Yeah. Okay. Depends on how awesome you are. Okay. You, know? yeah. Yeah. you want to be super awesome. <laughs> you do the miter. And do the miter and make that really exaggerated. It. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. It's like Gwyneth Paltrow cool. Do you, you know? see the miter like after they bullnose it? Like, do you see like that seam? It depends does it, on it, how does good your craftsman is. Okay. No. Craftsman and the marble and the you stone. You get what you pay okay. for. If the stone <laughs> yeah. is, the stone is really active, <laughs> you know, and she's a party, you're not going to see it as much just yeah. because they're going to hopefully match that really well. Yeah. Guys, and then yeah, yeah, take that'll the just get, yeah, the mm-hmm. bullnose like will get peacock. busy. I know. So it's much true. going on. It's so good. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's so good. So yeah, for your, that being said, I have to say, um, I'm just going to go ahead and admit I'm 46 years old. I remember the bull nose the first time I'm afraid of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to push all of you guys to do it. My mom did it in in the house and now it's in style again, but I'll bet you she's like, Oh, I regretted it for a decade or two. I wish I could go back, you know? Uh-huh. So I don't know. I don't know if I could do it or not yet, even though. Are we going to do it in the new cool. store or no? I don't know. We <laughs> okay. could still wait to find that. out guys. Yeah. Yeah. I could do it there and then that way I could live with it. But then at home I have like a squared off. But would you want to yeah, like, 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 let's the say in our off kitchen. just feels more universal because we already know the bull nose is going to go out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But all of the kids that are just young enough and they're like just now getting their party started in life. They're like the bull nose, <laughs> you know, and they're yeah. like their stuff levels uh-huh. are like a full 10. And you're like, go ahead. It's like bangs. You can do it if you want. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's like big bangs. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> like I had in the 90s. Not like Suze's cute bangs that are laying flat on her forehead. It's like the big bangs. That's. Uh-huh. The bull nose, but that was a party though. You were stoked was. about him. <laughs> oh, you guys, nobody did a taller bang than me. I had mine were equally, you know, how tall my face is. It was that high, but on top of my head. Were they Richfield style? Oh, yeah, fully. Ask anybody. I had the biggest ones in they town. used a That's lot of awesome. Aquanet to keep you those guys, suckers up. I don't even know what it was. It should be illegal <laughs> in like 50 states though. I, th- I thought yeah. your sticker, I mean, this is kind of fitting to your sticker, but I thought your yeah. sticker on your was funny. Yeah. It says tease it to Jesus. That's and it's, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still her. teasing it to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> I was just talking about how big my hair is, mom. You yeah. know, my mom teases it to Jesus too. <laughs> whether or not she wants to, to say it. Mom, that's a line from Dolly Parton. So just embrace it. It's cute. I love that. It's probably more like tease it to Jesus. Jesus to Jesus. You know? <laughs> like that. Tease it to Jesus. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, my girlfriend made that sticker for me. That's oh, nice. I love that. I still love it. Okay, That's back so to cabinets. Good. Okay. We'll talk about hair teasing in the next one. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That'll be a whole episode. Send in your questions now. How does Jess do it? Okay, more questions. These are um, questions from Instagram. Somebody wanted to know, is your cabinet maker also the one to do the moldings? So these are like your door casings, your window casings, your crown molding, that paneling you've always dreamed of in your dining room. The answer is no. That's your finish worker. Yep. You do need a finish work budget and you need a cabinet work budget. They're two different things. Mm-hmm. Maybe in a small town, he does both, but Good for, for the most part, they're different specialties. Yeah. Um, I think each I, of them are a lot of work and take a lot of time. Yes. So hopefully they're not both because then your house is going to take a real long time to build. That was my, that was my point. I think some people on paper are like, oh, if I get one guy to do a bulk of the work, then it's a cheaper cost but then you're going to be sitting there waiting. Negative. And if you're like paying a construction loan, that's interest. And all, I mean, we could go into that. So this isn't a finance podcast. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, two different people. Yes. The reason you have two different people is because you have two different subs working at the same exact time. Yes. Same time. Both well, two different yeah. things. And finished work is so much fun. It's the icing it's on the cake. It really is. Mm. It's the oh. cake decorating that happens in your house and you're watching him put trims on windows and do all these things. You're like, Oh, Hey, do you think you could just real quick, just like throw me up a coffered ceiling? And that's what they do, you know? Yeah. And so they're like, Oh uh, yeah. Is, is that in the bed? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Don't look, just give me a coffered ceiling, you know? And so they're the ones that can make all your dreams come true, uh-huh. even though it might not be in your bed or hopefully it is, but they're just like really talented and they can make something out of nothing. And mm-hmm. man, did I go for it on the finished work. <laughs> No, and, and it was worth it. Yeah. yeah. Also, I just kept that guy there for six months. It was so much fun. So I think today we do way more finish work. Oh my gosh. Also, I, here's a weird thing, guys. Window casings are optional. Some people just have sheetrock that dives in t- and goes into, into the, the window yep. and they don't case them with wood. So you don't actually have to do that in order to get a permit to be able to live in your house. That's extra. Mm-hmm. It's not included in the price unless you make sure and show your builder that you want to go ahead and case those puppies yeah. and you want to case, of course your doors, you need to kind of case those. You have to case. Well, yeah. you know, there's ways to not do it, but, but then you're still reinforcing mold, anyway. Yeah. So crown mold, base mold, you know, like all that. So you're paneling, you're finished, any of that. It's yeah. all considered finish work. Finish work is so much fun. You're going to mm-hmm. want all of it and you just need to make sure you budget for it in all the rooms because it's going to cost money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're going to well, ask you free. if it's like paint grade or stain grade, meaning you're going to stain this wood when you're done. Like in the old days when Naughty Alder was a thing and people Ooh. stained all their window casings and doors. And they were wood. Fun. Or if they're going to paint them, then they use a not real wood material. Sometimes they'll use MDF. Yeah. So yep. they want to know those things and that affects the budget. And so, yeah, they're two different craftsmen. Also, they're two different art forms. I think, I think yeah. cabinet, some cabinet makers be like, Oh, I could do it. But it's like, you want, you're not going to pay as, or you'll pay more for that because it's out of their wheelhouse. Yeah. Get a finished work because they value engineered it. Yep. So yeah. true. And they're better. Two different it. things. They do it all day, every yeah. day. Yes. Yeah. And like okay. for your closets and stuff, like that's usually oftentimes a finished worker or a closet system, cabinet makers, or anything that has like a drawer, a glide, any, any of those mechanisms that actually have like close a container yeah. where you store things. So yeah. that's the difference. Yeah. So one of the questions that one of our listeners had is what can I expect from my cabinet maker? I think you can expect your kitchen, depending on how detailed your pantry is. Mm-hmm. If your pantry is just shelves, your finished worker, finish worker can do yeah. that because it yeah. doesn't have any moving parts. Mm-hmm. If you want cabinet doors or drawers in it, then that's mm-hmm. also your cabinet maker, your pantry is. Um, so that's kind of an extra thing. Yeah. And that means you're living real good. If you yeah. can have a cabinets. butler's pantry is going to be your cabinet maker, right? right. Your mud hall can go either way. Your lockers mm-hmm. can be open without doors. Most people have them today. So that could be cabinetry, yeah. but yeah. they're pro- those are probably be boxes. So like boxes that are built to fit the space. That's what I, yeah. that's what I would recommend. So I would say that's a cabinet guy, but but it probably could be done with, with a finish guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I just, yeah. Um, your closets could go either way. I had my finish worker do my whole closet, but then I had my cabinet maker make me an Island. Mm. That was one way I sort of mm-hmm. cut corners on it. There you go. And we did really specific drawings for the finish worker. So we weren't like just bang up your basic closet because they just have a basic formula for every yeah. closet, yeah. like one bank cubbies, two rods, 
a long hang, a short, two short hangs. See you hangs. later. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so yep. they can bang out a lot of closets in a day unless you're specific and you're like, no, no, this is my flow. This is where my hamper goes. I mean, yeah. I know how I like a closet. I, oh, I have a lot of dresses. I need a lot of long hang or I don't yeah. have a lot of dresses. I have a lot of skirts mm-hmm. and shirts. So give me a lot of short hang. Totally. So know yourself before you go into that. But that's, that's your um, finished worker. What else is a cabinet mm-hmm. maker? Built-ins? Yeah, they'll Your do built-ins. usually the built-ins because usually you'll have like closed lowers with like exposed uppers. So mm-hmm. anything on each side of your fireplace. So those are built-ins. Oh, offices. your fireplace is your fireplace. Uh, that's finish a worker. finished worker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, that's a finished worker. If you do wood, yeah. Yep. Your hey. home office mm-hmm. cabinetry. Mm-hmm. Vanities yep. would be. Cabinetry. All your bathrooms All are your cabinetry. Bathrooms. Yep. Yep. Any like additional storage and things like that, unless you want operable like drawers or doors, Mm -hmm. it's just going to be your finished worker. So expect your kitchens, all your bathrooms, optionally closets Mm -hmm. and built-ins. Really, Those of you that are still doing things like shiplap, that's your finished worker. Yeah. Yeah. Or any type of wall treatment or panel. Also don't do shiplap. Just saying, yeah, let's not do it. <laughs> yeah, no. One Good thing, talk. one thing to you to expect, like from your cabinet maker, is that he's going to be doing shop drawings, which is like the drawings that he draws before they're actually built. You're going to sign off on those, and so when you sign off on that, just know what he drew. Yeah. Okay, so if you can gather all the images, all the information to inform him, then he'll make the shop drawings closer to that, and you can edit red line, and then sign the dotted line, pay for it. And they'll get going. So, so those drawings, you pretty good chance you're going to need to know the color on them. Oh yeah. Or if it's stain grade, then they're going to ask you what type of wood species Mm -hmm. you want to do it in. Yep. So, um, just know that too. Um, and if you're doing paint, you don't want to just be like, yeah, I just want a white kitchen. There's, you're going to give them the specific color of white. Cause they need to know that, especially yeah, right now. Like it's just whatever white you use in everybody's kitchen. Don't, don't do that. You want to choose. Dude, high point white. has followed just so far. <laughs> no, I'm still, she can't kick us out I'm of still in the South <laughs> for two more podcasts and then I'll be back uh, in Utah. Here. No, I like it. Stay there. Yeah. I so like it. those are things that you can expect from your cabinet maker. If yeah. you, um, if you, your baby has a nursery and you want beadboard in it in the old days, then that's your um, finish worker. Yep. We could do a quiz I and know. everybody could yell out if it's finish work or cabinetry. I like it. So I think you guys know the difference between a cabinet maker and a finish worker mm-hmm. at this point. Um, yep. Should we talk about sizing? Yes. Best I think steps. This is really interesting because we have ones when we were doing our drawings for like cabinets. We always like stay 24 usually is our base cabinet. And then historically we've done 12. 24 what? Tell them what it 20, is. Oh, sorry. So sorry, guys. 24 inches deep. We're going to talk yeah. depths of cabinetry really fast. Cause widths, as far as like the widths of your doors depends on your walls, depends on the function yeah, of that you wall. Choose that. That is a yeah. freestyling thing. Unless you use a cabinet maker that's like a ready-made yeah. shop and he doesn't do custom work. He's like, you can just choose that. That's just like 18 inches or 24. <laughs> you just choose that. And then however, it's like Ikea, right? Yeah. Yeah. However many of those are going to fit on the wall. That's it's all, your kitchen. It's all yeah. prefabbed. Yeah. That's and so prefabbed. that's kind of a bummer because your wall is yeah. not a standard size for the most part. No, and you're going to have some weird fillers somewhere yeah. up in there. So. And your yeah. kitchen can be so awesome. The yeah. quality is never as good either. The quality is never no, 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 as no, no, good. No, no. It's typically all like, particle board even the doors and stuff so the hinges don't stay on as well the drawer the glides don't aren't smooth yeah, sad. yeah. Nope. so yeah. super sad yeah so if you want and if something- you're listening to this podcast then for sure you want something custom so mm-hmm. i'm glad we're talking okay. about i know it. Yeah. so typically we would do 24 on the base and 12 on the depth of the uppers okay so they're not going to be equal in their depth 12 though i was talking to our friend who's a cabinet maker a matt and he said he does 13 uppers minimum Ooh. Only because he made a beautiful set of cabinetry for this lovely lady, gorgeous, and her dinner, her plates, dinner didn't plates didn't fit, and that oh, no. and that wasn't even an inset. We'll talk about like all the different types. Is that of- is that because yeah. did he do face face frame cabinet? Mm-hmm. Nope, that was just a euro, oh, the custom crazy. euro. But just for so for safety, he always does thirteen. So I think I'm going to make that our standard just. To be careful. And that's, I know, yeah. right? So like 13 that. inch uppers. Who doesn't want an extra um, inch in there? I know. Uppers. Ladies, am I right? I'm right. Here's, yeah. here's the inset hard, though. Okay. Go ahead. I was going to say, here's the hard part about yeah. that. It's going to get expensive because oh, if yeah. you're cutting a four foot sheets come in uh, 49 inches mm-hmm. so you can get four rips out of it at 12 inches. 
to the width of your saw blade Not too. Anymore. So yeah, now you're only getting three. So it costs you to go up. Just yep. to let you know. You the costs that. are already up. So we're going to do it. The but we already, way. Okay. we have the pretty yes. plates we got to fit. But for inset, which is like the Cadillac of the cabinetry, which is where like your actual door sits flush with the frame. Um, again, on our YouTube channel, we're going to show you pictures of all these things. But on that one, That's he does 25 inches way. depth. If you do inset and oh. you're planning on this, he does a 25 inches depth for the base cabinet and he does a 14 inch depth for the uppers. That's right. I know mm -hmm. very well funded. So you can fit all your fancy plates in there. Oh, so I like anyway, him. I really loved that, that tip. So we're, ch we're changing our ways. Yeah, we are. What about, How about you? <laughs> what about like a freestanding cabinet? Like how deep would like you do that? Like a China eight, cabinet? Eight, well, like it's floor to ceiling. It doesn't have a countertop. But it is like, like installed. 18. 18? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Usually yeah. 18. Okay. 18 inches deep. What about for uh -huh. bathroom vanities? Do you I, use, I would that? follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would usually, we always draw it at 24. Okay. I'm tempted by 25. If I have the room now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Based off his feedback. Typically because uh -huh. of like, I did mine at Plumbing. 24, uh -huh. but um, because of distance of your face away from the mirror, most people do 20. But I, 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 I think 24. Yeah. It's 20 like to 22. A sink Ew, for yeah. ants. <laughs> like, how does that work? Yeah. Just, just you yeah. dip your fingertips. If you so. get, if try you, being pregnant and getting close to that mirror, y'all. <laughs> That's a rough <laughs> oh, one. Yeah. You poor thing. No wonder you look I'll like that. Right. I know. I know. It's a oh. Monet effect. But I like, I, I did 24 on mine just because I like a million everybody. things on beautiful. my, I like, organizing all of my, you know, and having a tray and, uh, you know, uh -huh. like hair product and, yeah. and to all. So I needed a lot of space yeah. and a gigantic sink. So yep. 24, 24. I, think, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. 24 is what we usually draw. 24 is classy. 24 is real classy. Yeah. So 24, 24, 13. Great. That's, that's great. That answers your best there depth you question. Okay. Yes. Another one on sizing is what are yeah. some dimensions of drawers that are big enough to store pots and pans. So this is going to be Good your lowers. Question. Probably the same. 25. Yeah. Well, 24, 25. Well, we're talking about the heights. Depth of the drawer. Or yeah. The height of the door. Yeah. Panel. Yeah. So like drawers, usually for like, yeah. or yeah, it's usually like a nine inch interior <laughs> to fit a couple pans, two or three stacked on height. top of each other. And that's why if you're looking at a rectangle and you're looking, say I have like a 24 inch wide drawer, mm -hmm. how high should that be? It should be 11 inches on the front with a yep. nine inch interior. Yep. Okay. So, so for like your utensils, yeah. like that's going to be a six inch front with a four inch interior to Got fit it. all your organizational stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. Suze, yeah. you're, you're knocking this out of the park right uh, now. Yeah. 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 Are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, what is the ideal height of a sideboard or a buffet? Ooh. We, your dining table is going to be at 30. So I'd probably say 30, about 36. Yeah. Just so that when you're standing, like getting things it's comfortable off the, to take it over to the dining table, 36 is what the height of your like countertops are in your kitchen mm -hmm. or your bathroom. So I would say same thing for sideboards. Oh, you know what? While we're here, I <sighs> feel like it's really important to talk about the heights because so many people order bar stools Ooh. for their <laughs> countertops, which are counter height. Instead of doing oh, my a dad bar did stool that. for bar height. See, so let's tell the people what to do. So they're like, my husband's really tall. Yes. He needs a, he needs a higher countertop a custom, at 38 inches. He needs a custom height. And you're like, Oh, good luck finding a bar stool for that. No. Cause you're going to have to get lifters on those. Now you're going to put like stack it up with 10 felt pads on <laughs> yeah, each leg. <laughs> like make but sense like, of it the bar stools are too low like, in the back they don't go up to the countertop yeah. like yeah it's because you went custom i know yeah so you're gonna have to get Stick a stick to 36 to guys get a please bar, a bar stool and cut the legs down just to a custom yeah. height you know what i mean and we've done that Talking we've gone expensive. into homes just yeah, stick seriously. with your standards guys so we're trying to tell you 36 inches counter 42 inches bar. If you're going to go there, also, we're usually staying counter. Also, nobody does bar anymore. <laughs> They're oddly no. tall and it's awkward to get on it. It really is. Also, yeah. if, if you have a counter, like yeah. a, a counter height, but don't order bar stools. No. Order counter stools. Yeah. You'll counter never stools. feel fatter than sitting on a bar Try stool at a counter your height that counter. Yeah. Like, it's just like being on stilettos. Yeah. Yeah. You're like stilettos oh. with really chubby thighs. If you, you just can't get comfortable. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And then so. your legs are dangling. You don't know what to do with yourself. It's weird. It is. Just don't weird. do it. Nobody Stay does counter. bar height anymore. 36 inches is your height, girl. Yeah. And when they try and say, 
Let's make the island with a 42 inch, just a little bit of a top. It'll give you privacy. You can hide your mess. You're not like hiding a cash register, people. Like, like no. don't. <laughs> There's no reason to do bar no. height to do 42 inches. No. It's 36. Just, it's only a drop ledge for kids to throw stuff at and you. And you're never like, going to order a bar stool. You're going to order a counter stool. Good it's more ergonomically. It's just comfortable for our bodies. Yeah. yeah what everybody's doing now. you don't have to jump off of it or jump onto it either that's what i hate yeah, yeah i've never felt shorter in my life and i'm an average height yeah. of a man i think yeah your legs like, are just dangling yeah exactly yeah so awkward. also getting on it is unsavory <sighs> yeah i'm just gonna leave it right there okay <laughs> let's talk about color next <laughs> <laughs> should the island be a different color from the other kitchens how many kitchens do you have I know. I, let's just say this. Should the island be a different color in a kitchen than the cabinetry that's on the wall? Depends on how big the kitchen is, I think. But yeah. Depends on every single person. <laughs> in every single, yeah. 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 I mean, we usually would love to do a little detail on the island that's a tiny bit more special or unique than the whole kitchen. So it doesn't feel so standard. Oftentimes we'll do a walnut island if the, if the cabinetry is like some custom off-white shade. Yeah. Um, so like we might go stain grade on it. Um, I don't know if it is a smaller kitchen though, mm. if you're dealing with a smaller kitchen, I almost say keep it uniform it. just to, yeah, it'll make it feel larger. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. one thing that you taught me. Oh. You remember when we were redoing my old house? Yeah. yeah. You're just like your kitchen's don't too small. Don't get tricky. Just, just go all in. Stick so with we want uniform. Yeah. Don't yeah. get tricky. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to do party tricks. Yeah. But if you have a really like beautiful kitchen, you're wanting to do furniture details. Yeah. You see in a lot of these shelter magazines. Than like a bro wall that is so beautiful. So we're doing that. Beautiful. We're doing that on a kitchen right now. And it's this beautiful island mm -hmm. with this bro walnut that's like kind of lifted up on legs. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of like the whole kitchen perimeter, all those cabinetry is like this kind of really soft organic white. And it's going to be so, so pretty. Oh, so pretty. I just saw it in my mind. That's breathtaking. Would you, oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. Would you do double paint grade? To me, to me, this is why I have two different color paints, mm. yes. bottom and top. I've seen this happen. Or, or, or island and and like uppers and lowers. It feels inexpensive. Yes. It feels like you're remodeling and trying to make up for like past sins. I I agree. I also think yeah. that if it, it, it also feels like you couldn't settle the fight with your husband, <laughs> and so you both won. I'll give you the navy, which means BYU you navy lose. island, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and so you're like everybody loses. Yeah. 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 We're if, just going to make fun of you behind your back. If you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think if you're doing the, a different finish on the Island, I like doing a, something like natural wood. Same. If yeah. you're doing like, I um, agree. Sting Cause, yeah. cause then it feels like yeah. almost like a piece, like you brought yeah. in a piece of furniture. I did that in the attic. Also, I had the dowry for, our island, yeah. and, yes. but it was, it was like a, it's own private Idaho. And then, yeah. That's a good reason to do it. Because that's always the reason why you do it is to make it look like it's an antique piece of furniture made yeah. into a bathroom vanity or an island mm -hmm. or it's just got this beautiful story. story yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, storytelling. That's the and does the house make sense with that? Right. If the also, house has, do you make sense with it? Yeah. What's your story? Are you eclectic? Are you fun? Are you a collector? For sure, do it. Yeah. Yeah. If you're none make of those things, don't do it. No. Yeah. Um. I was going to say one other thing about that. Now I can't remember what it was, but anyway, um, paint versus stain. Okay. Hot right now. You know what we're seeing? We're seeing both, you know, like there's some kitchens that we do that are like all white Oak if it needs that. Um, but a lot of people but are still doing paint. I think 99, 95% of the time it's a painted kitchen. Yeah, it is. But I will say I got yeah. some, I got some Intel. Oh, good. Yeah. What paint the versus makers? stain. Okay. Um, cause I always thought that paint would be cheaper than yeah. stained. Like all my life. I'm like, Oh, stain, that looks more expensive. Cause you have to buy wood. It's not MDF. Yeah. But as a matter of fact, all shops typically paint is more money really? because they can't have any imperfections. Yeah. So it's just like, usually like if you have a door panel, like it has like the actual panel detail, like a style and a rail, that part is made out of like a um, paint grade maple. Yep. And then the actual flat part of that is made out of MDF. I'm so boring right now. Yep. But they have to do like two coats of primer, a coat of paint, a clear coat, and it all has to be perfect. And that is why it's more expensive. Whereas if you buy a stain or like just they're ordering the wood, 
you're just doing the top coat yeah. 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 on it. So and, and the it's less gap. labor. So and styles labor's and, expensive right now. Yes. Yeah, styles so. and rails to define that a style is the vertical part of the door. Yes. The rail is what connects the vertical part. So it's like, if you're thinking of a ladder, it'd be the rails of a ladder connecting the two legs. That's, that's what that is. But the gap between the style and the rail on a stained piece of, you don't notice it because the stain kind of soaks mm -hmm. in and it gives a little bit like darker color. Mm -hmm. If you paint that, the paint's going to soak into that and you'll see like a little, like, like, um, you'll see the gap yeah, yeah. In the, between it. So they have to spend time filling and sanding that they're double and triple checking bondo. these. Bondo. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. A lot of Bondo. So um, yeah. here's, here's a thing that blew my mind recently. I've seen it on a couple of jobs that they bring the cabinetry in unfinished, install mm -hmm. it, paint it on site. <sighs> I, I did that. It was hard. So hard. Really? Yeah. It's way easier I, to bake it I was wondering in. if the painter did it. Um, so it's still the cabinet shop that's going to bring in, install your raw boxes and then mm. use your own house as the spray booth. Yeah. It was, it was really hard. That sounds hard. Yeah. yeah. Like, Cause you can't, you so can't it, tip a cabin on its side and, and spray it. You're sanding it up. So I had a nine, a 10 foot cabinet and it was like, I was trying to control runs and all of that. It was, I would just say, just have them spray it elsewhere. In the yeah. booth. Yeah. Yeah. The most recent project, it was an out of state one, but the cabinet maker was here in Utah. So they mm -hmm. shipped it, got it installed and then they painted it on site. And I yeah. think that was just for, just because it was distance mm. for just keeping it, keeping the finish absolutely perfect once it's actually on site. Yeah. That's, that's the reason to do it. And that's the reason I did it. Cause you can put all of your molding up mm -hmm. and then you like spray the everything and then you don't have any like, you know, cause when you cut wood, like crown or something, it'll yeah. chip a little bit and you gotta like, you have to like use a pen or whatever you can use to um, fill it in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And to touch it up. So this, I was thinking like, Oh, I'm going to do Sounds everything, hard. get it done. Yeah. It, it was hard. It's hard either way. Cabinetry is hard. Yeah. So. Cabinetry is hard. You know what else I found out too? That clear coat on the top. That is what controls. It's not the paint. You're not buying semi gloss paint. You're not buying glossy. It's that clear coat. It's kind of like yeah. nail posh. And so if you just want to satin, it's a 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to like glossier, you go to 40, 60. Or if you want it flat, you go down to 10 or anyway, yeah. Yeah. I thought that that was, I didn't know that before. I, so. it, yeah. That's considered the sheen. So I mm -hmm. think it goes up to like, does it go up to a hundred? I don't know. I think I know, I know, I know it goes like in twenties. It goes up to at least 20, 80, 40, I've done yeah. an 80 sheen before. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. The next question is, yeah. is white out in a kitchen? How do you feel about a mushroom color for the cabinets? Well, well, it depends on your house, but I say like white is always going to be classic. It's, it's never your standard not, white though. I mean, we're no. never just choosing, you know, the whitest white. It's oh. always like an organic offshoot color. Mm -hmm. I think the mushroom thing's an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. um, so I love a custom white. You're going to look more expensive further away from Ikea, the better, you know, when it yeah. comes to a white and no white kitchens are not out. They're still the most requested thing I would say. Yeah. I feel Most like people. it's not trendy. It really it's isn't traditional. It's classic. Yeah, it's the father of the bride. Yeah. You know, for sure. For sure. It's, it's so beautiful. So, um, a really quick word from, um, Hunter Douglas. I actually have a house full of Hunter Douglas. I'm such a big fan. And I kind of got, get that Goldilocks moment when I walk into a room and everything about it looks and feels just right. Uh, the color's great. Um, one of the things I love about it is we take a lot of pictures at my house. And so I have the silhouettes and they're like the most beautiful, natural um, shade of, I don't even know, it's like nude. And then it has these beautiful, soft, like silky louvers in the middle, but I can pump them all the way up, all the way up to my casing. And I have a perfectly clear window, which most of the time we're shooting, we pull them all the way out of the way. Because the house looks bigger, brighter, you see the yeah. landscape coming in behind it. But like during the day, I can control the louver. Mm -hmm. I can pump them all the way up. We're like with a shutter, you always are looking out your view out of these lines. Mm -hmm. Or you have to pull them out, yeah. you know, like 36 inches into the room and then fold <clears> them back on themselves. And it's just not as a convenient. Hazard. <laughs> Yeah. And they're huge and they're yeah. heavy and it's, you got to clean all the louvers and mine are just all locked in. They're just like in between these beautiful nude transparent fabrics. And, um, I have silhouettes on all of my biggest windows. They come really wide. So they fit big windows. I have blackouts in my bedroom. I have different ones throughout the house for different reasons. The roller shades are really affordable to stack with your Romans. They just do a million things, but the look is always whatever you want it to be. 
And as a designer, I just love, love, love using them. Anyway, if you want to, you can visit hunterdouglas.com slash Dear Alice today for your free Style Gets Smarter design guide with fresh takes, creative ideas, and smart solutions for addressing your windows. Um, we're just huge fans. We love, love, love Hunter Douglas. You can just go to hunterdouglas.com slash Dear Alice for your free design guide. Um, again, that's hunterdouglas.com slash Dear Alice. Okay, more questions from listeners. Uh, okay. They want to know, is there a wood stain that is timeless? I think walnut. I would say walnut is the most because I'm like, if you think about it, 80s uh -huh. were cherry. Totally. 2000, 90s, 2000 got like, got really confused with the naughty alder. And then like now we're up with the, like the. Walnut's always respected too because I true. think it's an expensive wood. Yeah. To get, it's not too red. Would you can, not too it can, dark brown. It can be manipulated really easily. Yes, you can bleach yeah. it. You can stain it dark. You can keep it natural. It's a beautiful floor. A walnut floor is always like, wow, what a is nice this? medium tone that's not too dark, not too light. Yeah, it's really mellow. Would you do an entire kitchen walnut? Yeah. Okay. Or at least the island. Okay. You know, like she yeah. described that one up yeah. on legs. Burled. Oh my yeah. gosh. Hot damn. Burled walnut. Talk about expensive. No. You so know that's when I mean? you just wanted to leave it. You a specialty like, for the island. Excuse me. Is yeah. the homeowner here? I'd like to take out a loan. You guys look rich. <laughs> you know, it really does give you that well-funded, really good. Like you have impeccable taste. Mm -hmm. You guys can afford burl. Yeah. What's going on? What does your husband do? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I think I do. I would want to mix it up. We did like the Tahoe tree house and we did walnut for all their like perimeter cabinets, but we did do a painted uh -huh. island just because like when you see so much of it, especially something that special, yeah, it starts to lose its specialness. So you got to figure mm -hmm. out where's your break going to be. When I, I everything's so. walnut, nothing's walnut. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yep. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. totally, totally. But yeah, walnut I would say is like the most, mm -hmm. you know, obviously white oak is making a huge show right now and mm -hmm. we love it and it's beautiful, the but even grains, but even, yeah, the straight grains, but even like the color, like your color, it's a nice medium tone. It's not like it's gray. Yeah. You can gray is going to be stain. trendy. Control the stain and try and find oh something that feels because at home. Nothing looks more dead than if you go into a showroom, if you're at high point and they're still using the color gray. Shoot. It's so out. It's so out. It's so clotted on the clotting edge of design. Do not use gray. It makes me feel cold and mean. It's it. If you can get cold and mean, <laughs> then it is. I start throwing things. <laughs> yeah. You guys Never. don't use the color gray ever again. It's done. It's dead. And everything looks dead in it. And it's yeah. not pretty. No, you want to so. feel some warmth. We look prettier with warmth. And by all means, Everything. never, ever combine it with white, white. No. It's just the saddest. I saw that in some places. At market. I know. Yeah. So you pull them aside and say, hey. Uh, here's my card hey, <laughs> of this podcast. Hey, I, I can't look good in here. I have to leave. <laughs> my skin looks sallow. <laughs> also, your lights are fluorescent. No, oh, really, truly, Not like it's, it's time to start warming things up. I do think gray is really nice to temper a walnut because it can it's go yellow. Hot. Yeah. So it does keep your, I think your um, white oaks looking really mellow because they're just inherently warm and they're going to get warmer and warmer the more the sunlight hits them. But um, I don't know. I think this might be a really good time to talk about grain of woods. Yeah. Because you're ta telling us a story about your sister-in-law. Yeah. What story was I telling? About how she ordered a white oak bench. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, so, uh, yeah. So white oak is, um, there's a couple different ways to cut it. So they do what's called a plain sawn. And that's the most used one because it's it um, gives the best yield. So basically... It's if you if you're looking at the top view down on a tree, they basically just cut it this into inch to a, a bunch of pieces that stack on top of each other. Quarter sawn white oak is if you take that same view and you put like a cross in it and cut it into quarters, then you come across that quarter and cut it out of there. Obviously, that is not a good of a yield, and that's why it's a little bit more expensive. But that makes your grain a little bit tighter, and you get these like um, you get these like tight this tigering in it. It's called fiddleback in like the cabinet world, but um, and then there's a rift sawn, which is even a little bit less yield. And that's when you cut it into quarters and then you kind of cut like a, like a spiral cut out of it, which makes that grain even tighter. Mm -hmm. So if you tell like a cabinet guy, like, Hey, I want white Oak, you might just get plain sawn. So you're going to have to like, um, show either a picture. Yeah. Show what you want. Yep. Ex exactly. I was going to say like, know mm -hmm. what cut you want, 
but probably the best and foolproof way is just to show them a picture and they'll be like, Oh, that's Rifson or Cortison, whatever that is. And no surprise. Yeah. And I think a lot of most all um, white oaks that we're seeing right now have like some sort of stain or some sort of like top coat on them. So um, that's also huge too. If you have an image, y- yeah, ha- have an image, then they can match that stain too. Yeah. Closely. And red oak isn't the same as white oak. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. So it'll be like, no. oh, it's oak. It'll be fine. It's not. It's not okay. It doesn't. It's really hard to reverse the color of red oak. Yeah. And red red oak was like the '90s when it was like everything was like yeah. kind of goldeny looking oak. They put a medium oak stain on it, and is yep. that's the worst. Mm-hmm. That's my that and Naughty Elves. Think of Full House. Favorite. Yes. I don't even know if they had them there, but yeah, I, th- I, bet, I bet so. I yes. Bet they did. Oh okay. my gosh. Okay. okay. Probably have uh, time for maybe three more questions. Okay. Um, this one is: Should white cabinets match the trim color? in the rest of the house. You know what? We've done both. You know, it just kind of depends on, I really like the look Mm -hmm. when like, I can find a nice soft white. Like I, right now I love dove wing, Mm -hmm. but it's not a bright white. It's a wing from who? Tell them your secret. It's Benjamin Moore. Okay. We'll look that up and put it in our show notes, but dove wing is a really beautiful color Mm -hmm. and it's not, it's not too white. It's a little bit more Mm -hmm. organic and cream. So if you were to take that onto your, your case and base and everything, it wouldn't be a bright white. So you'd either have to go deeper or you go white on your walls and have a little bit more depth on your base and case. Nice. I think that's a really beautiful custom look you too. And so I like the continuation of it. Instead of trying to have like five different whites. I think everybody can live with that answer to have yeah. one color that they need to go forward yeah. with. I so think that that's good. And I so that feels good. And I think to the finish is going to be similar. You yeah. know, from your base and case to your cabinetry. Yep. And then your walls can kind of be quiet. Yeah. So great answer. Yeah. Okay. So this falls under the process of where cabinet decisions come in during the process of designing construction. So the first question is, can you do a backsplash after the cabinets are installed? Okay. Here's the order you're going to do. You're going to put in your flooring. Yeah. And I think you should run it all the way through. Yes. And then you're going to put in your cabinets. Yes. Then you're going to put in your countertops mm-hmm. and then you're going to put in your backsplash. So that's great. Um, that's so funny. The next question is how my contractor wants to install hardwood floors all throughout, um, before the cabinets, that's the exact right process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. should trust your building. You want that integrity of having that wood floor just for like for leveling for everything, just for like the finish. You don't want to have like a jagged floor, like meeting up with your baseboard, something shifts. Yeah. Everybody knows that you, it's Hot like having, corners. yeah, it's like having just like wood and caps on your, on your stairs. Like, you're not fooling anybody. I know no. there's not wood underneath that carpet. You just put in the middle yeah. of those two end caps. Mm. Same thing with your floor. Here's my two reasons um, to put f- the floor down first Yeah, uh, is because your cabinet guy is creating the toe kick mm-hmm. um, at three inches or some are three and a quarter. Jesus. And so if you put that on your subfloor first and then run your flooring into it, it shrinks that toe kick down a little bit, yeah. which can get on chubby toes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it just looks a little bit awkward. Yeah. You have like a smaller gap there. Yeah. Um, and then you have to put a quarter round or some sort of molding on top of that to your cabinets. You and then just shoe mold guys. Oh, uh, and it's, Ew. Yeah. Damn it. it's, that's just not, <laughs> that's that's just not a good look. Cause yeah. then, cause then you're like, Oh, do I match the floor? Do I match the cabinet? And no answer We've is all right. Seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. no not, one wins. No one wins. You. Just run your floor. And the shoe molds never the right color <laughs> oh. when it comes to the finish. No, just for it might even, they might put in a rubber. I don't know. It's just yeah. the worst. No. Gross. Okay. Um, last question. We could do this all day, but it's already, we're already at time. Um, <laughs> okay. So this one is under the header of refinishing. Is filling knots and painting the best option for a 2005 Naughty Alder? Nope. And what else is viable? They want to know. Okay. We did this at the very early stages of Al saying we did this mm-hmm. to a kitchen and, and at the time, our builder was just like, yeah, I could totally fill that in. We can paint over it. It'll be great. Nobody um, was the wiser. So don't nobody judge was, us. Yeah, no, we were young. Yeah. We were cowboys then. But everybody was a cowboy. Everyone was a they cowboy. They Alder with not 2008, yeah. 2009. Free. And then they're like, how do we repent? And we're like, fill the holes. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, it fill was the holes for everyone. It was dark. We were capsizing. Oh, so everybody dark. filled Gosh. the holes and painted the cabinets and acted like they didn't use Naughty Alder. Like when you see a Tuscan did. house and you're just like, part of it's now painted white and you're just like, you made mistakes. You're trying to <laughs> redeem yourself. Yeah. Same thing with the naughty the elders. White's too white. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Oh, gosh. So going. what you're going to do, what your option is now, if you're going to keep your boxes, 
I hope that they're going up to the ceiling and not doing a cityscape. Up you and know down. they're doing the city. I know. Damn it, Jess. <laughs> don't, act, don't act like they took their naughty. I'm just trying to make ceiling. them feel they were, really bad. <laughs> they were using naughty woods. Come on. They sure were. Okay. So it's you're a likely a cityscape. You can't what? reuse it. Don't reuse it. No. Just tell them the truth. Yeah. You're acting no, like they're for sure. You can't it. reuse it. What you're going to do is you're just going to take out all those uppers and you're going to do new upper cabinets. Oh, that's and nice then, you. yeah. And then on the base cabinets, you, if you're, you're probably going to get new countertops, you're going to take off all the doors. Yeah. You're going to, at the very minimum, if you're really on a budget, you're going to get new doors and new drawer fronts. And you can keep your boxes if, you know, if that's an option. And your cabinet guy is going to say no to all this. I'm just going to tell you right now. He's going to be like, you just get new cabinets. Yeah. Cause it's going to cost you, honestly, it's going to cost you just as much just for the labor. But if you're trying to do a home job and you're like going to Home Depot a bunch of times, this is your option that you can keep your boxes replace your fronts Mm -hmm. and then paint those new solid fronts that don't have knots in them and paint the boxes. Yeah. Corey, did you just die a little bit? I know you made your own cabinets. Yeah. What's your answer? Um, yeah, you prob- the, probably redo the, can you ca- fill the holes? Just no, you just uninstall all the cabinets no. and start over. Yeah. Or yeah. Sorry. Or yeah. The, at the very least, uh, do what Susie's saying and just kind of yeah. replace like doors and yeah. yeah, doors and drawers. I will say I was talking to our expert and he was saying that they were doing a job like that a couple of years ago and it was yeah. honestly like two or $3,000 away from just doing all new. Mm-hmm. Oh. So I'm just that's saying, a good, that's a good thing to know. It's, just it's also, cause it's harder. Nobody wants to do a, it. If yeah. you would rather to, build if new. If you're the person that has to reuse something, just think to yourself, I'm going to hang all these cabinets in my garage and I'm going to have a great working shop or you're going to post on KSL and someone's going to come yeah. and grab it all from me or, or, really? or take it to the they, shop. Yes, yeah. No, people will come and uninstall your cabinets and then all the demos done. Where do we they live? get to use? I know in the, future, the America yes. in the America, <laughs> <laughs> the, the America, America of the United it. States, oh. the North one, <laughs> or just Utahns. You just Utahns. No, this is, KSL. This is, it's this is the have you heard of like restore? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I'm crying right now. People. T- Please. Yeah. So <laughs> I think, guys, I think that's the best. Option. Okay. So the moral of the story is other people want your naughty alder cabinets and they'll pay you money there you go. and they'll come and install them. But because you're listening to this podcast, you don't want that. You just want a new kitchen. Yep. Do not fill the holes and try to paint. And the reason why it's, it's going to take too much time. It's going to be too expensive. Yep. And, and the people are going to cabinet cabinet makers don't want to fix someone else's mistake. They just want to start from ground zero. And the bad news is (laughs) when you open your cabinets, (laughs) it's still going to be naughty all on the inside. (laughs) (laughs) It's so true. Good times. It's so true. Oh my gosh. A word real fast before we end from our um, sponsor, Hunter Douglas. Um, Hunter Douglas. It's awesome. We've talked so much about their finishes. My, one of my favorite things is just how many options that they have for their finishes, um, no matter what the style of your home, you will find something. So today visit hunterdouglas.com slash dear Alice for your free style, get smarter design guide with fresh takes, creative ideas, and smart solutions for dressing your windows and whatever style you're in. That's hunterdouglas.com slash dear Alice for your free design guide. Awesome. Thanks so much for listening, you guys. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to send those to dear Alice at alicelanehome.com. We'll either do a podcast about it or we'll make sure and put it in one of our um, listener questions uh, podcast where we just answer everything. Thanks so much for listening. Um, so happy to have you guys. Hope we answered some of your questions and we will catch you next time. Thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating.